thank you for joining us. This is the day that the Lord has made. Gather your family, grab your physical Bible, and let's get ready to hear the word of God. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to Soul Restoration Ministry. Can you believe it is already 2021? It just feels like last week when I was sharing the message with the church that we're going into 2020. And I can't believe that it's already been a year from that moment. And I'm sitting here in January of 2021 uh, sharing the word of God with you. Well, listen, I hope you had an amazing and incredible holiday season. I hope Christmas was awesome and you learned a lot about Jesus Christ as you remembered when it is that he came into this universe, right? To provide salvation to mankind. And I hope that despite every single thing that happened last year, you are safe, uh, you are healthy. And if you're listening to me, even if unfortunately you lost a loved one in all the pandemic and everything that happened in 2020, that you're recovering okay. I want to be sensitive to those people who are out there who are hurting and might still be going through something of sort because of all that is going on. But you know what? We're in 2021 now. And I hope that with the advent of the vaccines for COVID-19 and everything that is, is happening, you know, we are pretty much seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. So remember, we always have to still pray for our leaders, our politicians, our health experts, and everybody who's at the forefront fighting this disease so that they will be strengthened and encouraged in the name of Jesus. Okay, but once again, Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. And I believe that God is going to do some amazing things in 2021. As a matter of fact, the message that I believe that God has for us is that we need to shine. We need to shine. And at SRM, we love acronyms. And that shine, last year we had grace, which is God restoring, anointing, challenging, and encouraging people. And this year, I believe that God's word for us is just simply shine. Let his light shine through you. Now, that is not a suggestion. As a matter of fact, I believe that it is a command. All right? There's a difference between a light that is on and a light that is on but is shining brighter. And God says, you know what? We should let our light what? Shine. But this year, the acronym that I'm looking for in shining is one, strong for the S, H is heaven, I is illuminated, and the N there is not, and the E is eschewed. So we want you to be strong. We want you to be heaven illuminated, not eschewed, so that you have the approval of God over your life. That is going to be our word for 2021. And as you are listening to us, as you are participating in our services, I want that to be something that sticks into your spiritual mind, okay? And may that frame the basis of what it is that we're doing this year. But you know what? We are going to shine. And as a matter of fact, I want to get into the word of God with you. Before you can shine, you have to have what? Light. Somebody say light. You have to have light in order for that light to basically shine. You know, the world is getting darker. The world is changing. And as the world gets darker, Christians need to shine. All right. You do not want to be, as an example that I've used, you do not want to be the car. And you are a vessel. You are a car. You're a vehicle. But you don't have lights. Because what happens is when the darkness comes, if you are a car and you don't have lights, you are going to be walloped. But then if there's a car that has lights and the lights are turned on, it is still able to find its way in the darkness. And I believe that as Christians, we need to shine ever brighter so we can find our way in this world that just seems to be getting darker and darker. If you are a child of prophecy and you believe the word of God, he did say that in the last days, you know what? Evil will just be prevalent. It's getting darker out there. And I believe it's time for Christians to shine. But what I want to do is, you know what? I want us to read some things from the book of Isaiah. All right. Now, Isaiah is an amazing prophet. Because when you read the book of Isaiah, I believe that this good old prophet from the Old Testament probably said so much concerning the coming of Christ than anybody else did. I believe that. All right. You know, Jeremiah talked about what was going on in Israel, in Jerusalem at that time. Ezekiel saw more about the heavenlies. Okay. Daniel obviously was in Babylon and he was doing his thing. But I believe that Isaiah was the one who was prophesying 
a lot concerning the future coming Messiah. Now, what I'm doing is I'm going to take my scripture from Isaiah chapter 9, and I'm going to read from verse 8. Remember, there is the light of men. Remember that there is the light of men. Remember that light of men. Philippians chapter 2 verse 15 talks about, you know what? There is evil out there. And Paul said, let your light shine. Let your light shine. Okay. So when you read Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8, listen to what the Bible says. It says, the Lord sent a word into Jacob. There is a word that God is sending into you. The Bible says that the Lord sent a word into Jacob and it hath lighted upon Israel. How is that? He was an individual and he received a word. Now, when that word finally lit up, the Bible said it lit upon Israel. It's almost like the Bible changed who he was. It amplified his calling and he became what? Israel. It changed him. It did something to his internal genetics. It for sure changed his purpose. Because if you remember, I mean, Jacob was just this guy who was pretty much a nomad just trying to find a way to feed his family. I mean, he went from his father's house to a foreign land so that he can, you know what, pretty much get an employment and make, uh, and make money. But then you know what? He had an Israel in him. And that Israel that was in him was because of what the word. And when the word lit, the word cast, 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 the word, the word was light and it cast its, 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 its visibility into his future and he became known as what? Israel. So let's read that again. It says, the, the Lord sent a word into Jacob and it hath what? Lighted upon Israel. Think about that. May the Lord cast a word into you this January. That will basically give you clarity concerning your future. May this word change who you are. May it have a tremendous impact in your life. May a word in this Bible from Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 22, may something in you jump out. Listen, I am holding the Bible in my hands. Okay, and, 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 and the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, okay, that, that, that through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. This year, as you read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation, I pray that something will jump at you, which will be a word in you that will just cause you to what? Light up. And as you light up for the kingdom, you are going to shine so brighter than ever before because the world needs Christians to what? To light up. So now let's go to Isaiah chapter 9 and just go a couple of verses up. Same chapter. Let's just go to verse 2. The Bible says, listen to this. The people walked in darkness the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light it's amazing because if you think about it when you are at home and you turn on your lights all right you don't really see what is out there as much but funny enough the people who are out there in darkness are able to pick up the fact that there is what there is light out there you know if you go to the harbor if you live, as you're listening to me, by the coast, they always have something they call the lighthouse. And you know, the funny thing is that the good lighthouses, right? You realize that sometimes the beam well, goes in circle. And the idea is that all those ships that are in what? Darkness, which might have lost their direction. What they do is they look at the coast. They look at the coast. They look at the beaches, right? And once they see that light spinning, they know that there is what? Hope. Because there's a lighthouse out there. Now, when that word came into Jacob and it lighted him into Israel, verse 2 says something very interesting. In the same Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, it says, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. May somebody see a great light in you in 2021 in the name of Jesus. Please say amen with me. May that be you. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Listen, God has given you light. He's given you a word. If you listen to any of our 
social media outlets and you listen to any of the word that came out of this ministry they were sources of light because light is the word of god that we were just dispersing to catch your your spirit on fire so that you may what shine into the great thing that god wants you to be well listen it shines the people who are in darkness see it okay and the amazing thing about it is that the people who are also in the shadow of death upon them hath the light what shined so may your light be casting out its what impact and its influence on people who are even in the shadow of death think about what i'm saying when i say death you need to understand that i'm talking about somebody who maybe has lost hope when i say death i might be talking about somebody who just wants to give up when i say death i'm talking about somebody who has just given up on life and doesn't know what to do Okay, somebody who is in darkness, somebody who is lost, but because of you and because the word of God is strong in your life, may they look at you, may they look at you and say, you know what, there is hope out there. And because your light is shining brighter and brighter, your light is shining what brighter and brighter. May that be you in 2021 in the mighty name of Jesus. Like I said, Shine is not a suggestion. It is a command. God is telling us in 2021 that we need to shine because there's something that he wants his body, okay, the body of Christ to do. And we are the only ones who can effectively do that thing. Now, what I want us to do is go to Isaiah chapter 8 and, 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 and let's look at one of the ways by which you can shine. All right. So let's go to Isaiah chapter 8 and let's go to verse 16. And listen to what the Bible says here. Here we go. The Bible says, bind up the testimony. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. It says what? Seal the law among my disciples. Listen, a seal is, a, a, is an affirmation. A seal is basically a demonstration of what authority. It is a seal of power. When you are out there driving, and somebody stops your car. One of the things that you look for is to see if they have what the badge, if they have the seal that gives them authority to be able to stop you in your car to basically tell you what you're in violation of. I don't have a badge. I don't have a seal. So as a matter of fact, if there's anything illegal going on in the streets, I just protect myself because I don't have a delegated authority or a seal to be able to basically put that person who is a bad driver on notice. I, I just don't have that. But the Bible is saying here in uh, Acts chapter uh, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16, that we should seal the law amongst my disciples. So what God is saying is that the law in itself, the word of God, the law is what? A seal. It gives us a delegated authority. You see, I was sharing with the church in 2021. And by the way, just so you know, I believe that every single word that we shared in 2020 shouldn't be something that escapes your mind. It is a platform. 2020 was our year of conscious growth. And everything that we did there is, sell, is, is serving as a platform so that we can jump higher. Okay, so we can jump higher in 2021. So he says, seal the law amongst my disciples. Okay, so that is our delegated authority. Jesus, the Father and the Son were the ones who created the whole universe. They have intrinsic authority. They can do anything they want. God says, you know what? The thousand cattle on the hill is mine. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He can do whatever he wants, but he has delegated authority to you and I. And that authority comes in the seal of what? The law. That's why it's very important to know the law, the word, the light, so that you can what? Shine brighter and brighter. Oh, isn't that amazing? Isn't our God a good, good God? Well, let's keep going on here. He says, seal the law amongst my disciples. But when you jump to verse 20, it takes on a different meaning. The Bible says, to the law and to the testimony. Listen to this very carefully. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is is no light in them. Seal the law among my disciples. We read that in verse 16. 
20 says, if they speak not, underline not, according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Now, when I was sharing this with my church last year, I did something just so that we can, we can, we can reveal the meaning of this scripture in a more deeper way. And this is what I shared with them. If I remove the word not and no from this scripture, I believe that the real meaning, the, the under pillar of this scripture goes like this. If they speak according to this word, I skip the word not. If they speak according to this word, it is because there is light in them. So you need to understand something. The seal is the law. God said in Isaiah chapter 9, which I shared with you, that what he sent a word into uh, 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 Jacob and it lighted on what? It lighted on Israel. We see over here in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20 that if you speak according to this word, it is because there is light in you. So what I'm trying to say is, you know what? For all those years you've been born again, for all those church services that you sat through when you were going through 2020, there has been so much word that your pastor, that your teacher, that the apostle, that the prophet, that the evangelist that you were looking on, whether social media or whatever it is, has deposited into you. Now, it is time for you to speak according to those words, okay, so that it proves that there is a form of light that is in you. If you have the word of God in you, you have what? Light. And may that light begin to shine in the darkness. May that light begin to actually have an impact on the people who are close to death, who are dealing with the shadows of death in their Christian work in the mighty name of Jesus. It is about time that the church had an impact. You know, sometimes I, I, I think to myself and I say, you know what? 12 men who were dedicated, 12 men who encountered the supreme light, which is Jesus Christ. Those 12 men were determined to let their light shine in the universe wherever they went. And by virtue of allowing that light to shine, today I am still pursuing the shining of that light as I sit here 2,021 years from when Jesus Christ walked into this earth. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our time. It is our moment. And woe unto us if this is the church that doesn't let the light of Jesus Christ shine. All right? Now, I was also sharing with my church this. Please hear me very carefully. That nature abhors vacuum. Nature just doesn't like vacuum. Listen to me. I breathe in so that I, what, I breathe out. When I breathe in, I'm taking in what? Oxygen. And that oxygen replaces what? Carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide from my lungs. It's just exchange. Somebody say amen. Space does not like to stay empty. If I empty out my lungs, it will be filled. If I empty out, for example, a room, it will be filled with air. If I stop using my car, guaranteed, you've all seen it where somebody has a car and maybe they feel like they've abandoned the car. But guess what happens? Nature takes over that car. There is dust, there is rust. There is no such thing as a vacuum in this world. Matter of fact, the devil loves vacuums to the point that when he sees there's a vacuum, he wants to fill it. Remember the story in Matthew chapter 6. So you know what? When we don't shine as Christians, guess what tries to fill the vacuum that is left? It is darkness. So if we want to overcome darkness, then we have to make sure that the vacuum is filled with what? The light. And I'm talking about what? The light of Jesus Christ that is within us. Okay, and we are just basically wrapped around that word, but we are the light to this world. We are the light to this world. Please say it with me. I am the light to this world. I am the light to this world. Yes, God is depending on you as his light. It is possible. You have to shine. It is in the word of God. Once you start speaking the word of God, you are literally proving that there is light in you. So I pray that this 2021, you will join us when we say, you know what, you need to shine. It means you need to be strong. You need to be heavenly, what? Illuminated, not eschewed. 
please. You see, when you read the book of Revelation, we get to heaven. And heaven is a place where it's what? The light of the Lord reigns. In heaven, the light of God basically rules. But funny enough, when you read scripture, he says, I will also cast you out into what? Outer darkness. Well, what I'm trying to tell you is this, please, please. Let your light so shine that God doesn't feel like, you know what, he has to eschew you into outer darkness when you get to heaven. Unfortunately, some people will go there. It is in the Bible. But I am praying and trusting that in the name of Jesus, you're going to be that strong Christian. You are going to be that Christian that is anointed, that is full of grace, that is full of the word, that he will want you around in his kingdom anyway because you are serving such a powerful God and you are the reflection of what of what his glory is now listen to me very carefully it's very common in the charismatic circles for you to hear people say you know what the devil is under my feet and we always talk about how we're more stronger than the devil and god has given us more power than the devil and the devil is under my feet and we cast out devils and all these kind of things we have all heard those messages before haven't we now i'm going to challenge you on something if you truly have one up on the devil, do you know what the Lucifer means? Lucifer means the bearer of light. So at one point, Lucifer knew how to handle light. It makes sense because he was filled with emeralds, topaz, all sorts of ornaments was in him. And the Bible said he was the anointed cherub. Lucifer was the bearer of light. But guess what? He disobeyed God. He let pride get to him. His beauty got into his head. And the next thing you knew, he was cast into the outer darkness. Guys, we're not going to let that happen. And since we have one up on the devil, and the devil is darkness, then let us be the light that actually overshadows his darkness. Okay, listen, let me tell you something. You know, you watch these uh, movies where maybe... There's a house, it's a haunted house, and you know what? There are cockroaches there on their mice. You know, just think about that gruesome scene. Well, guess what? When somebody what flips on the switch and light comes, what do you have? What do you have, what happens to all those rats and cockroaches? They what? They run away. They go back to the shadow. They go back to the shadow and the walls from where they came from because the light has made what? An entrance. So I am praying that in the name of Jesus, this 2021, listen to me very, very carefully. Your light will shine. When you walk into the room, your light will shine so much that all the roaches and the rats, all those disgusting animals that nobody wants to be in their house anyway, will just want to scatter and run into the corners because what? The light of God has finally showed up in the room. All right, 2021, please shine for the kingdom. Now, remember what I said in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 8. He sent a word into what? Jacob. And it has what? Lit upon what? Israel. So how did that happen? And the, I think the detail of that story is in Genesis chapter 32. So I want us to read that real quick. And after we're done with that, you know what? We will get another clue as to, as to how this light actually works. So remember, from Isaiah chapter 16 and 20, we know that when you speak the word, you are what? Speaking light. When you speak the word, you are speaking what? Light. When you speak the word, you are speaking light. So when you go through 2021 and it looks like gloominess, darkness, uneasiness is coming around you, we need you to turn on the light and to declare that light by speaking the word of God. Somebody say amen. He said, let there be light and there was light. Why can't that happen to you? Remember, all power in heaven and earth has he given unto us. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 32 real quick. And I believe you'll love this. You'll be blessed. So we're going to read from 24. And this is how the light actually shined on Jacob and lit on Israel. Listen to this. And the Bible says, and Jacob was what? Left alone. So don't be surprised if in 2021, sometimes you feel like you're left alone. Okay, in 2021, being left alone is a good thing because what you need to do is what? Navigate where you are and say, you know what? This might be an opportunity for God to do what? To try to get my attention. Okay, so 2021, when you are alone, 
Do not act like you are depressed and you are lonely. If you find yourself alone, you know what? Seek for the attention of God. I believe you'll be blessed. So here we go. And Jacob was what? Left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. So this means that if they were wrestling until the breaking of the day, then that means it was what? Nighttime. It was what? Nighttime. In the darkness that is happening in 2021, in the darkness of the world that we live in, in the abundance of sin and in the abundance of what? Abominations and in the abundance of lack of lack, lack of desire for the word of God, where it looks like there's evil out there. You just have to continue wrestling with your Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit and be wrestling with Jesus Christ for what? Something to happen to you. You need that change. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, the Bible says he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint and he wrestled with him. Listen, Christianity is tough. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all. There comes a point where you have to wrestle with the Father for that light. In order for Jesus Christ to become the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings. He had to wrestle with death in himself. Remember, he even said, Eli, Eli, lama shabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Sometimes in 2021, it might feel like God has forsaken you, okay? But I want you to understand something. In that moment, remember, if you wrestle with the Holy Spirit and you wrestle with this word, what's going to happen? You are going to find light. So the Bible says, and when he said, let me go for the day what breaketh, for the day what breaketh, for the day breaketh, which means that there was a light trying to shine and pierce through and basically change the environment, which was nighttime when Jacob began to wrestle with God in maybe prayer. They were interacting. What is prayer? Prayer is when you have communication with God. And as you can see, the man is talking to Jacob. Jacob is talking to the man. It is basically a form of prayer. The only difference is that maybe God has shown up physically and was dealing with Jacob as a man to man. So here we go. And so he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou what bless me. Wrestle for your blessing. Wrestle for your blessing. Wrestle for your blessing. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, my name is Jacob. My name is what, Jacob? Here comes the light. And God said, and God said, and he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. This is where, this is the source. This is the story behind Isaiah chapter 9, what, verse 8. For a prince hast thou power with God and with man and has what prevailed. Oh my God, this is the word that God gave Jacob that caused him all of a sudden to expand from just being a man to being a man that had influence to what? Formulate a nation. It said, for a prince has thou power with God and what? With man and you have actually what? Prevailed. Ah, this is incredible. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask of my name? And he blessed him what? And he blessed him there. Listen, I am praying that in the name of Jesus 2021, you will heed the command of God and just shine. Just shine. Just shine. That's all you got to do. Dust yourself off, polish yourself up, and just shine. So I have a few questions to ask you before uh, 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 I conclude the session that we have. If I know one scripture very well in 2021 and I go read 10 more, I'm shining. If I can only pray for 10 minutes a day and I move from 10 minutes to even 15 days, 15 minutes a day, I am shining. If I've only loved one person in my life, but this year I love three people in my life, I am what? Shining. So shining is when you are actually increasing and executing on the word of God. And all you're trying to do is just live this thing correctly. So 2020, I encourage you to just shine. 
shine, shine, shine. And I believe that God will do some amazing, incredible things in your life. Please, don't fall backwards. Shine. Because Jesus wants to do something big in your life. Okay? Listen, thank you so much for being with us. I believe that you were blessed. I believe that you've learned a lot. I know you're not going to let God down. Please don't let God down. Okay? So with that said, listen, join us the next time when I continue talking about the light. Next time we do this, I'm going to talk about the ultimate light, obviously, which the world has seen. And his name is what? Jesus Christ. He also did some things to change his perception. And it was a very powerful thing. Everybody has to shine. And the thing that I love about our Savior Jesus Christ is he doesn't do something and naturally assume that we can do it. Obviously, I can't die for your sins. I can't do that. Only Jesus Christ can. But after he laid that foundational work of being the Lamb of God, whatever power that he has, he gave us the privilege of saying, you know what, I want to delegate and share that power with you so you have authority and you have a light in this world. So let's stand for Jesus. Let's stand for God. Hallelujah. Now let's pray real quick as we finish this, okay? So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this opportunity to share your word together. Heavenly Father, let your light, let your fire burn within us. We pray that in Christ we are more than a conqueror. And 2021 will be that year that will go down in memory. 2020 was a year where there was the pandemics and all that kind of stuff. But in 2021, it is a time for us to shine. So may your glory shine upon our lives in Jesus' name. So why don't we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the living God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Somebody say amen. Listen, if you want to be a blessing to this ministry, which I know you probably want, okay, when you go to soulrestoration.org, you can actually hit donate and you can give that way. And if you're watching the U.S. and you want to text and bless this ministry, you can do so by texting the amount that you want to give to 84321 and God will bless you mightily. See you next time. Don't miss it. We're talking about the ultimate light, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord and personal Savior. See you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for joining us. We trust that you are blessed. To stay connected with us, please go to soulrestoration.org. We hope to see you next week.